In the last video, we wrote a method called evalPoly, which would evaluate polynomials. And we did it using the math.pow function. Turns out that there are more efficient ways to do this, using pow to evaluate kind of small number uh, powers is very inefficient, at least if they're whole numbers. You're better off just doing repeated multiplication. Well, so I want to write a different version of eval poly that does not use the indices and it is also not going to use pow. So how are we going to do that? Well, it turns out, so if we started down here, if we start at the low end of the coefficients, then we could have a multiplier of 1, and then it would go to x, and then x squared. So each time through, we could just multiply by x. So we could have a var called power, which starts off as 1.0, and then every time through the loop, we could multiply it by x power times equals x. Okay, so that would give us the ability to get rid of the pow. We could just multiply by power, but we have to work from the bottom up. It turns out that's not so hard to do. If we just went through the coefficients, but instead of going through them, so if I do this, I actually wouldn't call this i anymore, I'd probably call it c, because it's now one of the coefficients. If I do this, it'll go 3 to minus 5. But what I really want is minus 5 to 3, which means that I can go through the coefficients in reverse order. You might recall from an earlier video, there is a method called reverse, which will give us these things in the reverse order. And then I can simply say that sum is C times power, or I increment sum by C times power. And then I multiply power by X, okay? This is, we'll call this eval poly rev for reverse. pass it the same arguments, make sure we get the same answer, and sure enough, <clears throat> we get another zero. So this version makes me perhaps a little bit happier. We're actually using the fact that this is a for each loop. We're going through the collection elements, and I don't have to call pow. Uh, so this will wind up being more efficient code, but an alternate approach to using a for loop to solve this same problem.